Hello, 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 great wows, and welcome to today's lesson. As the title suggests, we will be doing a lesson on protein synthesis. As a student, this was one of my favorite topics because of how exciting it was, and it was so interesting. You're like, oh, okay, so these are how proteins in our bodies are made. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so this is just a brief overview of protein synthesis, how it works. So what you need to know is that protein synthesis occurs in two stages, namely transcription and translation. And also, um, there's just some key terminology that you need to know. Um, you need to know firstly what amino acids are. And that is basically the smallest piece, we would call it in biology, a monomer of proteins. So proteins are made of amino acids, right? Okay, cool. And then you need to know what a base triplet is. And if you remember from DNA replication, a base triplet is basically three nitrogenous bases um, that occur on a DNA base triplets and then transcription which we'll go into more details about translation which we'll also go into more details about and then there's something called a codon we will also you'll also be learning more about that when we get into the phases and there's also an anti-codon so familiarize yourself with that terminology because you will be using it or reading a lot about it when you are answering or studying on protein synthesis so transcription transcription basically is the very like in terms of the stages and the steps very similar to DNA replication so if you studied your DNA replication and you know your DNA replication it's it's gonna be easy but yeah let's just go into it without wasting time so first things first you need to know that transcription happens in the nucleus all right transcription happens in the nucleus okay so what will happen first i hope you can see the pointer um yeah what will happen first is that similar to dna replication the dna will unwind and as it unwinds you know that there are weak hydrogen bonds so the weak hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases will break which will result in it basically unzipping and then you now have two separate strands but now one strand will act as a template to form a complementary strand of which we call messenger rna so this strand will carry the message from the nucleus basically it will carry the instructions of how the protein needs to be built which is why we call it messenger rna and how this happens is that here in the nuclei in the nucleus we have something called the nucleoplasm and the nucleoplasm has you know free rna nucleotides so these free rna nucleotides um will pair or will bond <laughs> with the complementary um, mRNA um, strand so yeah and then okay so this is the strand for example that acts as a template and then the free nu nucleotides let's say here there was cytos this this nucleo Tide was cytosine. I mean, this nuclear nitrogenous base. Sorry, <laughs> this nitrogenous base was cytosine. So, a the RNA nucleotide for guanine will come and bond with that. You know, so yeah. Once that has been completed, the mRNA moves out of the nucleus through the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm where it will attach to a ribosome that is the end of transcription so the key 
key things that you need to know is transcription is where the mRNA is formed. Okay, so now we get on to translation. So basically, we're now at a point where the mRNA has attached itself to a ribosome. So there will be tRNA, which is known as transfer RNA, that is found in the cytoplasm which will bring the complementary anticodons to the mRNA's codons. And basically, these anticodons have a specific amino acid. So whichever amino acid or the anticodon, whichever one is brought by tRNA, it is according to the codons that are on mRNA, which is why we say that mRNA has the message because basically it runs the show. It says, um, I want cytosine, I want huanine, you know, type of thing. So it, it's brought according to the codons that are on mRNA. And then these amino acids that are brought are linked by a peptide bond to eventually form the required protein. And basically a protein is formed when there are 50 or more amino acids we would then say a protein is uh, formed okay so now we just need to go into more details on the differences between the three there's the base triplets codons and anticodons and the definition for the base triplets would be a sequence of three nitrogenous cases on the dna molecule um yeah found in the dna i actually don't really <laughs> like reading but i've noticed that some people are like um i should go over it so yeah but you just need to know the difference between the three and then the base triplets carry the genetic code for a specific amino acid and then codons so base triplets happen are uh, on the dna molecule codons are on the m R and A and then anticodons are on the T R N A. So they are complementary. Anticodons will be complementary to codons, if that's me if that's that makes sense. Codons found in mRNA, anticodons found in tRNA. Codons basically carry the code, right? They code they carry the code for a specific amino acid and then the anticodon bring the complementary amino acid so that it can be added to the protein chain so yeah that's the difference okay this table please know how to fill in the table you do not need to know the names of the amino acids those will always be given to you you don't even need to know like the sequence however you need to know how to complete it so as an example here with methionine i hope that's how you pronounce it <laughs> you see that the dna base triplets the sequence will be t a c which if you know that's thymine adenine cytosine so the complementary um, amino acid for that will be adenine because you remember adenine um, is complementary with thymine and you see here there's adenine but here we do not see thymine and that is because RNA does not have thymine it has uracil so the complementary for that will be uracil and cytosine and huanine same story here we had adenine so obviously the complementary will be uracil we had uracil so we will have adenine we had huanine and now we have cytosine so the key thing here that you need to know and you don't, you, you don't get confused by it is that base triplets which is dna will have thymine whereas mrna or trna will have uracil instead so 
those are the key notes that I would say you should know. Okay, so let us practice. So this is what a typical exam question would look like. They'll be like completed or they'll give you a multiple choice question where they've given you possible um, amino acids and you just need to figure that out. But let's do this together. So C, G, A, the complementary amino acid for that will be G, C, U. And I'm emphasizing the U because we are on mRNA. If it was DNA, it would have been thymine. But because it's mRNA, it will be uracil. So just to repeat that, I think the next slide I did fill it in. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, it will be, yeah, G, C, U. And the tRNA will be C, G, A, basically. <laughs> so sometimes, um, if there's no thymine or uracil involved, they will be two that are basically the same, um, that have the same amino acid in this table. But anyways, okay, here we're given the mRNA codon. So we'll start this slide. Adenine. So in DNA, adenine will bond with thymine so it's going to be t g g g stands for guanine or guanine i'm not sure of the pronunciation but yeah we'll move on to aspartic acid and the mrna code on there is g a u so the dna base triplet will be c t t for thymine because it's on dna c t a yeah and I hope it's okay for me to just to say CTA, um, but basically cytosine, thymine, adenine, and the tRNA anticodon will be cytosine, uracil, adenine. Um, yeah, so basically that's how you would answer these questions. Moving on. Okay, activity one. We need to identify the process above. They will mention that this is protein synthesis, so and it's only points for one mark. So you just need to say that this is translation. How do you know that this is translation? One, because of the presence of the tRNA. Um, I used to call it as a student cross. If you see those crosses, you know that it is translation. Um, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Organelle A would be the ribosome molecule b would be the mrna and the bond at e right here would be peptide bond so i'm just i'm gonna try and take you through the my thought process of how i get these things so organelle a how did i know what organelle a was because of again this is not the correct terminology but as a student this is how i would think so there's that long black line that is attached to it and if you know that a long black line that is attached to something long black line being mrna you know that it attaches to a ribosome so that's how you figure out what organelle a is and then with molecule b the long black line yeah my thought process would be like the only possible thing that a long black line could be is mRNA. Again, this is not the correct terminology, but this is the thought process that I would go through as a student um, to try and figure what each of them are. And then the bond at E. So if you've studied, the only possible bond that you've been taught about is peptide bonds so as a matrix student that one is a bit easy because you haven't been taught of like many others so that's again how the thought process would be and then with three we need to provide the letter and the name of the molecule that carries the amino acid <laughs> 
so as i was um explaining right um i think i explained this but as a student i would be like oh the cross like thing so the cross like thing the correct terminology for that is tRNA, right? And as we see here, it is in the, it is represented by C. So it would be C tRNA, and then is the monomer of a, a protein. So if you were able to figure out A, that answer kind of gives itself away. So that will be D, which is carried by tRNA, basically. So the answer is D. Okay, for question four, we need to name and describe the process occurring in the nucleus. So you'd highlight that, which results in the formation of the mRNA molecule. So the process, firstly, that occurs in the nucleus and results in mRNA is a process known as transcription. So that's one mark. And then we also need to describe it. So basically with transcription, the first thing that happens is that the DNA double helix unwinds. And because of that, the weak hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases are going to break. And then the DNA unzips where one strand will act as a template and this template will be used to then form the mRNA and that happens with the free RNA nucleotides that are in the nucleoplasm. I explained this a bit earlier in more depth but yeah you would just basically describe the process of transcription there. Okay, so the table below shows the different amino acids and we need to give the correct sequence of the amino acids for the DNA triplets one, two, three. So here we're just finding the complementary. So basically, if it's T, A, C, the DNA triplet one will be a T G. So I'm sure by now you know that stands for adenine, thymine, and guanine. So with triplet two, it's going to be A G A, and with triplet C, it's going to be G G T. It would have been a completely different case if they asked us for mRNA or tRNA whereas for example um, it would have been a u g a u g because in RNA we have uracil instead of thymine that is a wrap for this video um, there's other aspects of protein synthesis such as mutations, which I have not covered in this video, but you do need to know that as well because it is examined. But I do hope this short video helped you, and thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.